time we share with a dash of this and a pinch of that mixed all up with care the best company and conversation recipes and new creations we're cooking up something good here at home we are cooking up something good here at home well hello family do you know what this is I know they're getting more popular, but a lot of people don't know what this is. This is an avocado. And, you know, for a long time, people just like, were, oh, avocados. Well, I think with the, the upsurgence of Southwestern cooking, because they use this a lot in Southwestern cooking, these have become very popular. 68 cents a piece in the store, or you can go to, to Jordan's and get them. I don't know what they are there, but I'm telling you, when. When these are hard like this, they're not ready. You don't want to try to cut them. You know, you can't, you don't feel any give. This is a hard surface. But as our, you'll find out soon, if you put these in what our hint tells you to do, they will soften up. And the next day they will be, they will be soft enough that you can, you don't want to mushy. You just put your thumbprint in there and they'll have a little give under the skin. We're going to make Paul's favorite guacamole today. And I'm telling you, he will eat it on anything. Eggs, he'll eat it on pizza, he eats it on everything. Or he'll just eat it with a tortilla chip. He loves it. He would never eat avocados. But I started to make them, and, and the, way you, the way you add flavor to them is what makes them good. The texture gets creamy. It's very delicious. We're going to do that. Besides, we're going to make something to put that wonderful guacamole on. Pizza! Now, I don't think we've made pizza since the very beginning, almost 20 years ago. And today we're not making the plain old, get the sauce, get the crust, get the cheese, and get the pepperoni. No, 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 we're none of that. There's not a red sauce in the place. We are making four delicious, incredibly wonderful pizzas that I know you're gonna enjoy. As soon as the hint's over, we'll be back in the kitchen. We're making pizza pie and guacamole. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Here's today's at-home hint. If your avocados are not ripe and you need to use them in your dish tomorrow, place them into a paper bag and close tightly. They should be softened and ready to use by morning. If you've got a helpful hint, we'd like to hear from you. Send your hint to At Home Hints, Cornerstone Television, Wall, Pennsylvania, 15148-1499. Welcome to Patty and Arlie's Pizza Parlor. We hope you enjoy it today. <laughs> Patty's here with me, and she's going to be doing an awesome tomato bacon pizza square pizza in a cookie sheet. And I'm, do, I'm starting with dessert. Um, after you have the other pizzas, then you're going to want a piece of my fruit pizza. And I'm going to start this because I'm dealing with melted chocolate. But Patty, go ahead and tell them. Let me tell you first. Hold on. I've, I've got two cups of white chocolate chips and I have uh, just a little bit of cream, and we microwave that to melt it. Now I'm putting some cream cheese in with that. This is going to be what we spread on our pizza crust to, to hold all the fruit on. So I'm gonna go ahead and work with this. She's gonna tell you what she's gonna do with her, her bacon and tomato uh, pizza squares. We already used a refrigerated pizza dough crust, rolled it all out. Or you can make your own if you yeah. want to. Rolled it all out, baked it for 10 minutes, and now we're gonna mix um, mayonnaise, which is like four tablespoons, and a couple uh, tablespoons, or three cloves of garlic, or two cloves of garlic. Yeah, that's gonna give it great flavor, really great flavor. And this will make like a paste to go across the top of it. Instead so of the good. red sauce, this is a substitute. What I'm making is a substitute for a sauce, and what she's making is an alternative sauce for that kind of a, of a pizza. Okay, there that, go. that quick, that's done. Now let me show you what we're gonna do here. We have taken a ready-made, this is a sugar uh, cookie that you buy in the tubes, already made in the store, Pillsbury makes it, whoever. And we use this huge pan, and you can make a smaller one, you don't have to make it this big, but we've baked it and cooled it completely. And that's what it looks like. And now I'm gonna spread all of this on top of that cookie crust. So actually this is like an icing. Kinda, well, but the basic, 
reason that you're doing this is because you want the fruit to stick to something. And that's going to stick. Let me get my little scraper here. I'm going to get all this up. I love pizza. You know, Paul for years hated pizza. Really? Would never eat pizza. Never. Mm. I'd say to him, can we get a pizza? He'd say, well, let's go someplace that they have something else that I could get. And I'm like, well, what am I going to do with a pizza oh, all by goodness. myself? But, you know, in the last couple of years, he's really come around to liking it. Wow. So I remember saying to him one time, Paul, can we do something really special? Would you just kind of go along with me? And he said, well, what do you want to do? I said, can we just order a pizza and eat it in the house? He's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> like that was a big deal because we never ordered pizzas. The only time I got pizzas is if I went somewhere, you know. So now he's getting to, he likes it, especially when I put that homemade guacamole that I'm going to share with you in a little bit. Well, how to make that. Good. He loves it. Okay, oh, what are you doing? We pizza eaters at our house. Oh, yeah. Okay, Most um, people are. I spread the mayonnaise and garlic mixture on it, and I'm just mixing up the crumpled bacon, which we did about nine pieces of bacon, maybe a little bit more. Yeah, it depends on what you like. If you like a lot, use more. And we did um, about four tomatoes, some onion, about a third cup of green pepper. And we just mix this all up. Wow. Makes a nice, pretty, colorful topping. Yeah. With that bacon. Oh, everybody's going to love this bacon. Well, the smell, just, you know, when you're cooking bacon, that's, that's just like, hello, come on, it's time to eat. Come on in. Everybody, yep. you know. You know what, Patty, I'm going to, after we put our fruit on, which is a variety, yeah. then we're going to make a glaze that you pour over it to keep it nice and fresh. And that just has some pineapple juice. You know, all the recipes, all the ingredients, they're available to you. So be sure to write in for them. A little bit of cornstarch and some sugar. Get that all out of there. Okay. And some lemon juice. Let's just put that on. And all that has to do is dissolve the sugar. Doesn't okay. have to boil Doesn't and all that. Doesn't have to boil. No. Okay. okay. Now, let me get rid of this too, Patty. You want to unplug it? Yeah. There you go. There we go. There we go. Now we're all right. good. All right. Now, <laughs> do a little clean up here. You can use any fruits, any kind of fruit that you like. Whatever turns you on, whatever's good and fresh in season, that's what you want to use. And of course, you know, I think strawberries makes a statement, whatever, wherever you use them and whenever you use them. So I would start by just doing my strawberries, and I've sliced them. And we're going to put them all around the edge. I think I'm going to turn them this way and the other way. They don't slide, keep sliding out of my hands here. Mm. They have a mind of their own, you know? And the fresher, the better. Because you really want them to taste good. You don't want a big, hard piece of a strawberry that doesn't have any flavor. Nothing worse than that. This is probably the most time consuming of the whole of what you're making here, is just putting out all the, the fruit around uh, in circles. But you want to do it so that uh, there's a variety and everybody gets a little taste of something that they enjoy. Now, this sauce is supposed to get a little thick, right? Yeah. Okay. It's gonna, it has to thicken up a little bit, okay, right? Okay, and am I supposed to stir it the whole time? I don't think you have to. Okay. I think it just has to come up to a boil and then it'll thicken. Okay. Okay? All right. Because you have to get Yeah, some, I'm going to mix my stuff on. Okay, now show us, show us what's in there now. Tell us again what's in there. Red pepper, tomatoes, green pepper, onion, and bacon. Wow. What's not to like, huh? Right. <laughs> now, that, that'll be really good on here. Absolutely. I'm trying to see where the basil is supposed to go into. I think the basil goes in there. It does yeah. in here, uh -huh. too. Okay. Sure. I didn't want to put it in the wrong, the the wrong, wrong place. Thing. Huh? Right. Yeah, look how pretty that looks, too. Oh, yeah. What, I mean, that right there, that, just that combination is going to be awesome. Because okay. the flavors that comes together, that's like, that's uh, delicious. Oh, heck yeah. <laughs> it's going to be good. I know. And my crew's all big pizza eaters. They mm -hmm. love any kind, any way. Well, and I think these are different. That's why oh. I didn't want to do the traditional stuff because mm -hmm. everybody does that. Right. So I thought, well, let's try something different. Yeah. This is different, but I think you're going to like it. I think right. you're going to enjoy it. I think so. Yeah. Now, when, when this fruit pizza gets done and we pour the glaze over it, you're going to want to keep it refrigerated. It's really important to do that. So I think, you know, if you're going to make this for tonight, you want to do it in the afternoon. Just think about that. 
Now I think we're going to use some blueberries for our next round. That's going to be nice and colorful too. I think so too. And you just kind of want to keep them in just in a like the same width the whole way around your. So it's all uniform. Yeah, you kind of want it to be that way. And you, you know this is very forgiving. What's nice, you can push that down into that that uh, white delicious. I mean, what's not good about white chocolate and cream? Yum! That's a, that is a dessert in itself. Yep, white coffee. You might need to go back and fill juice. in. That's what I'm doing. Rearranging like my tomatoes here so they look beautiful. Oh, absolutely. We have to because we eat everything with our eyes before we ever taste it with our mouths. So we're going to keep working on these pizzas and uh, we're going to come back and give you some more. But here's a message you need to hear. We'll be back in just a minute. Well, it's pizza, pizza, and more pizza today. Patty and I are doing some unusual savory pizzas, uh, and even a, a dessert pizza, which you're going to see in a minute. Uh, one you're going to do now is chicken garlic. Oh, my goodness. This is awesome. Yeah, this looks incredible. And the Tell first them what thing, you did about this, though, yeah. first. Well, we rolled that dough out, got it that good, and we melted butter and garlic and basil. Mm -hmm. and, um, chopped onion. Chopped onion, and you... Then you put it in a chilled bowl so that it's set up a little bit. Because you don't want to so put it hot so on runny, top of that. Right. Yeah. And then all we're doing is spreading that on here right now. Then you're going to put the other ingredients Right, then on. we'll put the rest of it on. And I'm making, while she's doing that, I'm making a pesto pizza, which starts out with a bobbly crust. This is a thin crust that you can buy. You know, these are all, if you want to make your own, they're fine. But for convenience sake today, we're doing this. This is a bobbly. And I have some Parmesan cheese here, and I have some ricotta cheese. And all I'm going to do is mix these two together. And if you have a lot, you have access to, maybe you have a freezer full of uh, wonderful fresh basil that you had from last year's crop, and you want to make your own fresh pesto, you certainly can. And it's not hard to make, it's delicious. But if you can't, you can buy it. And here's a container that we buy, and I like this brand name too, that you get in the refrigerated case at your local store. And what we're going to do with that, you get this mixed up here. I love ricotta on a pizza. I love oh. ricotta on anything. Oh, so good. So mm -hmm. good. And mix it up well. well like I don't so. know if I've ever had it on pizza. Ricotta. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay, and here's our pesto. And I'm just going to take the pesto. I'm going to mix the oil. See how it separates a bit? But pesto is made out of basil. You can make it out of a parsley, whatever. But it has delicious flavors in it um, of, of garlic. And sometimes they put nuts in it. You can, I mean, you can put about anything you want. But garlic is the main flavor with the oils. And I'm just going to spread this on my crust. Depending how much you like, you don't have to use a lot. Or if you like it, you can use a lot. And we're just going to evenly do that while Patty's sprinkling yeah, cheese over there. Parmesan cheese on it, yep. I like Parmesan on a pizza. Yeah. Because I think it does, you, you always think of the mozzarella, the provolone, because it, it melts kick. nice. But I'm telling you, if you get good Parmesan, it, it will really, it'll melt pretty nice too. It gives Give you it a, a nice boost of flavor. Yeah, it does. Oh, okay, you know what, I may as well use the whole container because there's not that much left. Just spread that down there. Okay, we got it. Now, what we're going to do is take this that we mixed up with the ricotta, and we're just going to drop that right on top of the pesto, all the way around. You can make it thick or thin. You know, it doesn't matter if it mixes up with the uh, the pesto. You know, if it gets you know, mixed up with it, and so you can't see a white layer. That doesn't matter because we're going to cover that with some fresh tomatoes, which will be wonderful. You want to spread it out. How are we doing over there, Patty? Good. I just sprinkled some of the provolone and mozzarella cheese. Okay. On top of that, and then we're going to do um, chicken. Chicken's next, yep, and that's already pre-cooked. Pre -cooked. You want to make sure you cook it. And yeah, the quickest, easiest way to do your chicken is put it on a plate, single layer like that, 
and put it in your microwave and let it cook until the juices run clear. You can season it down, a little salt and pepper always helps the flavor. But that's the, you don't have to boil it and all that. Sometimes you boil all the, the flavor out of it because you get cooking and you cook it too long or whatever, it's just not good. So we found that this is the, when you need anything, a cooked chicken to add to anything, that's the way to go, quick and easy. Yeah, it is quick and easy. Mm -hmm. I like doing it that way. And, it's, and it stays moist too, which is, I like that. All right, we have some Roma tomatoes. That's what's going on next, all over this wonderful pesto pizza. And this baby here is going to be baking at 450 degrees. Ooh. This is a hot one. Is hot. <laughs> I love sliced tomatoes on a pizza. That's Especially like Especially when they're nice and ripe. Yep. And you know, the Romas are pretty much available throughout the whole year now, which is good, because sometimes, you know, some of the other ones, depending on what time of the year it is, they don't look so good. They look good. Like, Paul calls them anemic. They need a shot, you mm -hmm. know? And um, so these are good. These are very nice, fresh tomatoes, thanks to our good friends at Jordan's. And, and I'm putting ricotta on my pizza, too. Good. I'm putting little dots. And you know what? There we are, right down to the tomato. Perfect. Then I'm going to add some cheese. Now, you can do Romano cheese, or you can do this cheese. We kind of like this kind of cheese because we, you know, pizza isn't a pizza unless it's got stringy cheese. Oh, yeah. So that's what we're going to do on this. Cheesier the better. Absolutely. And that's it. You only bake this 12 to 15 minutes because remember the crust is already cooked and it's ready to go. So you don't have to worry about that. That's our pesto pizza. We're going to just push that to the side because I want to show you, I hope we don't run out of time. I want to show you Paul's favorite guacamole. Very simple to do, easy to make. And we start, of course, with some avocados. If you don't know how to do this, watch. You put the knife in and then just let it go around like that. And then you twist and it opens up. You have this big giant seed. All you do is hit it with the knife, twist it, comes right out. Very easy to do. Then you take a, a spoon, go around the edge. That avocado will pop right out of that skin. Look at that. Ready? Da da! That is slick. Done. <laughs> but you know what? If they aren't sharp, if they aren't ripe, you'll have a, a horrible time. Let me tell you what else is in here. We're going to mash these avocados. I'm going to add some feta cheese, diced tomato. I have some cilantro. I have some black olives, garlic, lemon juice to put on here after you get these mashed so that they don't get brown. A little bit of onions, some shallots, and red wine vinegar and oil. Oh, I'm going to tell you something. You're going to love it. These are recipes are all included in uh, our newsletter for this month. So if you don't see this, you don't get to see all the putting it together, you'll be able to, to get the recipe and make it at home. Because I think this is something, it's an acquired taste. Paul, like I said, Paul didn't like these for years. Now all of a sudden he can't get enough of them. And avocados are so good for you. They keep your cholesterol down. They help you with blood pressure problems. They're good for your skin. It's good for your hair. They even sell avocado oil that's, that moisturizes your skin incredibly. So, and they're so inexpensive. It's a wonderful way to get something different into the diet of your family. You might like it. And all I do now is just chop these up. Chop them up real fine. Get that little piece of stem out of there. And then we're just going to mix everything else, put it in the fridge, and we have Paul's favorite guacamole. We're putting it on top of our, of our pizzas today. Stay with us. Patty's about done. I'm about done, and we're going to bake them off. We'll be right back in just a minute. Don't forget you want, you're absolutely going to want to get these recipes. So please be sure to send for your newsletter, the Enjoy newsletter. You're going to enjoy our issue this <laughs> month. To coin a phrase, huh? Yes. Well, Patty, I think this is a great pizza this buffet. Amazing. Wouldn't this be nice for, oh, my goodness. like, you just have, like, six, eight friends in and just say, we're having pizza, and then put this out. Oh, my they goodness. They would love it. Yeah. Let's start here. This is our chicken garlic uh, pizza, and you can see baked it on the stone. Just covered. That smell is awesome with just little dollops of the ricotta. ricotta. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, of course, the tomatoes. Next to it is, oh, hello. That's, that's this amazing. This is our, I think this is so pretty. 
It is. We make the glaze and we pour it over the top, just puts a shine to it. That's awesome. That's, that would be good to any kind of a dessert. I mean, for any kind of a dinner, this would be a great dessert. Oh, yeah. And then here's bacon, tomato, tomatoes, squares. Squares, yeah, mm -hmm. which you could cut as an appetizer or however you'd want to serve that, just cut them in. I love square pizza, so that mm -hmm. would be a good idea. And there's my pesto pizza, which is just awesome. You want to get that cheese nice and golden on the top. The smell of that pesto is incredible. Mm -hmm. Very good for you, very, very good for you. And then I told you about this, and here it is. This would be a portion size for Paul. No, <laughs> I'm telling you, he loves this. And it, like I said, you want to make it that day and serve it that day. It does keep, but it loses a little bit of its um, fresh taste. This is awesome. This is totally awesome. You say, oh, I don't like avocados. Give it a try. Just try it. I think you're going to enjoy this. This is a great addition for on our pizzas, on, on any kind of eggs, on any kind of a meat dish. This is a great addition. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Patty, for helping us out thank today. You. And thank you for watching. Be sure to join us the next time because it just wouldn't be the same without you. We'll see you then. Furnishings provided by Levin Furniture, featuring Lane's Country Living Collection. Food provided by Jordan Banana Company, wholesalers of fresh fruit and vegetables in Travosburg, Pennsylvania. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.